Welcome to topic number 32 in Richard James Mathematics Resources. This one is entitled Trigonometry 1. It is the first topic in trigonometry and it has to do with the solution of right angle triangle. Before we go into just working with right angle triangle, as a matter of fact, we are going to take a good look at the whole development of trig ratios. The smallest number of lines that can form a closed convex set or polygon is 3. It should therefore be no surprise that the triangle forms the basis of almost every concept in trigonometry. Its simple representation and the logical relationships among sides and angles has simplified some of the seemingly insurmountable problems. From the Great Pyramids of Egypt to the zones in the defensive third of the Brazilian football team, the application of the relationships between sides and angles of a triangle have proven to be no less than magic to the beholders. It is no wonder that those who have manipulated the sides and angles of triangles to great effect have been regarded as genii throughout all ages. One fundamental fact of trigonometry is that the ratios of corresponding sides of similar triangles are equal. This is true no matter how large the triangles are, as long as all the angles of the first are equal to all of the angles of the second. So we are going to consider a triangle that is enlarged to twice its size. The reason why we are doing this is that if we can show that the ratio of the corresponding sides are equal, then this is going to be our foundation of trig ratios. And that is why trig ratios can be used irrespective of the triangles that they are used in. So we have A, B, C, the size of our first triangle, the size of our second triangle, A prime, B prime, C prime. Of course, A prime, B prime, C prime is an enlargement of A, B, C. And there we have the size of the sides of the first triangle and the size of the sides of the second triangle. And as for, you, you can see that 4 here and the corresponding is 8, so it's an enlargement by scale factor 2. So this one is twice, and also we'll find that for the other sides that the same is true. In this case, we are sure that the angles of the first are equal to the angles of the second. Yet we have made sure of that by using one triangle as the enlargement of the other. We will then show that the ratios of corresponding sides are equal. So we are going to examine ratios of corresponding sides. The ratios are written as fractions, of course. There are what ratio? AB to BC. So AB is 6, BC is 3. So the ratio of AB to BC is 2. And of course, if we take the corresponding sides, A prime, B prime, over B prime, C prime, we are going to get 12 over 6, which is the same ratio that is equal to 2. And if we examine another set of sides, we'll end up with the same situation. So this time we are saying AC over BC, and that is 4 over 3. So we're going to say then A prime C prime over B prime C prime. So A prime C prime over B prime C prime, that we get 8 over 6. You know, we have these sides indicated here and marked, and the ratio is 4 over 3. Turns out to be 4 over 3. You know, if we reduce this fraction 8 over 6, that's what we are going to get. And of course, we are looking at corresponding sides, and they are indicated by the red and blue lines. Two comparisons should be enough to prove our point. We have seen that the ratios are the same in both cases. This fact has greater consequence than most of us would even imagine. 
Now we are going to take a look at trigonometrical ratios and by short we call them trig ratios. The ratios of the sides of a triangle are called trig ratios. However, the trig ratios that are generally used in mathematics are defined on right angled triangles. This is because right angled triangles facilitate the naming of the sides relative to specified angles, which is necessary for defining the trig ratios. There we have a right angle triangle. How do we know that? Here we have perpendicular lines. These perpendicular lines are generally used to indicate a right angle in a triangle. Any other angle is usually marked with a curved line. So this right angle, of course, a right angle, the size of a right angle is always 90 degrees. So if we find angles that are indicated with perpendicular lines as we have right here, those angles will be right angles. The right angle in any triangle is marked by perpendicular lines. When other angles are marked, curved lines are used. The sides of a triangle are given names relative to a specified angle. The specified angle in this case is A. There we have it. A right in that slot there. The longest side is called the hypotenuse. It is opposite to the right angle. So that's the hypotenuse and it is opposite to the right angle. The side that is on the other side of facing or opposite to the specified angle is called the opposite. So the specified angle we have here is A. Opposite are facing all over the air that way. So the side that is opposite or facing are on the other side of that side is the opposite and it's indicated right there showing that it is opposite to the side A. The side that is beside alongside or adjacent to the angle is called the adjacent. The adjacent is right there. It is worthy of note that the hypotenuse is also adjacent to the specified angle. However, we already know that it has a special name being the longest side of the triangle. Write down the values associated with the hypotenuse, H, the opposite, O, and adjacent A relative to the specified angle. So we are going to write down the values of the hypotenuse, the opposite, and the adjacent relative to the specified angle. Now in that case, the specified angle is A. And of course, the hypotenuse is the longest side, and it is opposite to the right angle. The right angle is marked off with those perpendicular lines. It is marked off with those perpendicular lines, so the side that is opposite to it is the hypotenuse and of course the side that is opposite the side that is opposite to the specified angle is called the opposite so we have the hypotenuse there and that is 13 so we have the opposite opposite to the specified angle is 12 and that we have indicated right there O is equal to 12 centimeters and what about the adjacent the adjacent is the other one that is beside the angle and that is adjacent is equal to 5 centimeters. 13 centimeters is the longest side and it is opposite to the right angle. 12 centimeters is the side that is opposite to the specified angle. That one is called the opposite. There are two sides that form the specified angle. One of them is the hypotenuse and the other one which is 5 centimeters is called the adjacent. We are going to continue with our exercise, write down the name of the sides. Those are going to be relative to the specified angle. And the specified angle in this case is B. Of course, the hypotenuse is opposite to the right angle that is 25 centimeters. The opposite, the one that is opposite to the specified angle that is 24 centimeters. And the adjacent is the one that is right beside 
the, uh, the angle. It forms the angle along with the hypotenuse, but the hypotenuse has its special name already. So that side that is called the adjacent, 7 centimeters. There you have it. 25 centimeters is the longest side and is the side opposite to the right angle. 24 centimeters is the side that is opposite to the specified angle. There are two sides that form the specified angle. One of them is the hypotenuse and the other is the adjacent. There we go again. Our hypotenuse is the side opposite to the right angle and the one that is called opposite is opposite to the specified angle which is C in this case. Right. And our adjacent is the other one that is beside the angle C. It is beside, adjacent to or alongside. Right. And that is our adjacent. A is equal to 3 centimeters. And we are saying the same thing because we are using repetition in order to help students to cement these things in their mind. So 5 centimeters is the longest side and it is opposite to the right angle. 4 centimeters is the side that is opposite to the specified angle and it is of course called the opposite. There are two sides that form the specified angle. One of them is the hypotenuse and the other one is called the adjacent and that one is 3 centimeters in length. Trig ratios are given names relative to a specified angle. If the specified angle is A, the trig ratios are defined as follows. So if the angle is A, we say sine, sine A is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. We say also cosine A is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan of A is equal to opposite over adjacent. And we are going to write those trig ratios on right angle triangles in a minute. So it behoves us to be able to easily identify the sides relative to the given angle in order that the trig ratios can be written down. So if we are going to write down trig ratios, we must be able to identify the sides as hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent relative to a specified angle. If we cannot do that, then we will not be able to write down the trig ratios. So let's go. The first one, write down the trig ratios of the specified angle in the right angle triangle. And that is, of course, going to be relative to the angle A in this case. And of course, we have our hypotenuse there, right, um, opposite to the right angle. And the one that is called opposite is opposite to the specified angle. And of course, the adjacent is the other side. And of course, it is beside the specified angle. So let's write down now, sine A. Take a look at the trig ratio, how it is defined before we are going to write down the values. So we have opposite over hypotenuse. So sine A is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. What do we do? Where is the opposite? The opposite is right here, 8 centimeters. The hypotenuse is 17 centimeters. So let's do that. 8 over 17, opposite over hypotenuse. See, opposite is 8 over hypotenuse, which is 17. And the adjacent over hypotenuse is the cosine. Let's go back to that. Adjacent over hypotenuse, that's cosine. What's the adjacent? 15. The hypotenuse is 17. So let's write that. Tan of A is opposite over adjacent. Let's find the opposite. 8 centimeters, adjacent 15. So we know that we have there now 8 over 15. So there we have it right now, all of the trig ratios, the three trig ratios, as a matter of fact, those that we'll be taking a look at, we have defined those three trig ratios on the triangle that we have. So we are going to move on to another triangle, and the specified angle in that case is B, and of course, as usual, the hypotenuse is the side that is opposite to the right angle. And of course, our opposite is going to be opposite to that side B, right there. And the adjacent is the other side, and it is beside the angle B, right there. So sine B is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Where is opposite? 6 over hypotenuse, 
10. So 6 over 10. Cosine of B is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent 8 and hypotenuse 10. So 8 over 10. And tangent opposite over adjacent. No problem with that. Finally, looking at our third triangle, hypotenuse opposite to the right angle. C is the side that we are talking about. The side that is opposite to C is that 24 centimeter side. And the adjacent is 7 centimeters. The side that is alongside this side or adjacent to the angle C. Now we're going to look at sine of C opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite is 24 centimeters. That is over the hypotenuse, which is 25 centimeters. So 24 over 25. And in this case, the cosine of C is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 7 over 25. And let's see what we have there. Yes, 7 over 25. And the tangent is opposite over adjacent. 24 is our opposite and our adjacent is 7, so we'll have 24 over 7. Now, we are going to be taking a look at something else that is a feature of right angle triangle. And this one is known as Pythagoras theorem. The theorem states that the square of the longest side of a right angle triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. And of course, the hypotenuse is always the longest side, and it is labeled H in this case, right there. Of course, it is opposite to the right angle, so we know that the hypotenuse is that longest side that we have there. And of course, based on the exercises that we have done so far, no one should have any difficulty identifying the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. The other two sides have no special names. This is because we have not specified another angle. So they, they have no special names because they, they, are, they are not defined relative to any reference angle. So because we do not have a reference angle, we just put the two other sides. We call one A and we call one B. So based on Pythagoras' theorem, according to the theorem, the hypotenuse squared is equal to the, the sum of the squares of the other two sides. And the sum of the squares of the other two sides are given right here. A squared plus B squared. To make H the subject of the formula, find the square root of both sides. That is just a matter of transposing formulae, just like we have done when we have worked on the earlier topics. So, square root. So, we have H is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. No problem. And we are going to use that in order to determine the length of the hypotenuse of a right angled triangle. So we're going to use Pythagoras theorem to determine the length of the longest side of the right angled triangle. So we're going to substitute the values of the two shorter sides into the formula. So of course h is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. And of course in this case finding the hypotenuse the two sides that we have here for A and B are the two shorter sides of the triangle. So one is going to be 9, the other is going to be 12. So 9 squared plus 12 squared. Now, under that square root sign, we are just going to square 9, we get 81. You square 12, we get 144. Then we are going to add them. When we add them, we get 225. And of course, we know the square root of 225 is 15. So H is 15 centimeters. Of course, we know that any number will have two square roots, a positive and a negative. However, the side of a triangle cannot be negative, so we must be speaking specifically of the positive square root, which is 15 centimeters. Another one, of course, the hypotenuse that we have there is equal to the square root of the sum of the other squares, and those are the two shorter sides, and we are going to replace them right there. So. One of those will be 7.5 squared, the other will be 4 squared. It doesn't matter which one comes first because they are contributing to the formula in the same way. So there we have square 7.5, we get 56.25, and square 4, we get 16. Then we are going to add those 
we get 72.25. And of course, we are going to find the square root of 72.25, which is 8.5 centimeters. All right. The other one, we're going to do our substitution again with 24 and 7. And what do we get? 7 squared plus 24 squared. 7 squared is 49. 24 squared is 576. And of course, we are going to add them as usual. And the square root of 625, no one should be searching for that one. That is 25. So the other side, which is the hypotenuse, is 25 centimeters. And that is how we apply the formula all the time. Now, the original algebraic statement of Pythagoras' theorem can be transposed in order to derive a formula that can be used to find the length of any short side. So we have a squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Of course, we're going to transpose. We may put a or b to the other side because a is a shorter side and b is a shorter side. So it does not matter where a or b goes. It does not matter whether a or b goes to the other side. The derived formula will be the same. So that's what we have. So that is our derived formula. And then we need to probably reverse it to get b on the left-hand side. And then b squared is equal to, and by transposition, we know that we have to take the square root of the right-hand side. So by, by taking the square root of the right-hand side, that's what we'll get right there. b is equal to the square root of h squared minus a squared in this case. And of course, it is very important that we take note that it is a negative sign that we have there. So h squared minus a squared. It is remarkable that in the formula for the hypotenuse, the squares are added, while in the formula for the short side, there is a difference of squares. While in a rush, students invariably use a plus sign even when the length of a shorter side is required. A rule of thumb can be for longer, we add, and for shorter, we subtract. That means if we're going to find the longest side of a triangle, we need to add. If we have the longest side and we want to find one of the short side, then we subtract. So we're going to use Pythagoras' theorem to determine the length of the missing short side in this case in the right angle triangle that we have. So we are going to use that. It is a matter of just applying the formula in the same way that we did before, but do not forget that now we have the hypotenuse squared minus the square root of the other one. So we have to substitute there, and we have 6.5 squared, which is the hypotenuse. It does matter in this case which one goes first, because the longest side of the triangle, which is 6.5, it will go first. And the shorter side must go next, because if we have this reversed, we are going to have a small subtract, a big, and that is going to give negative. And of course, the square root of a negative number does not exist. So we have this square of 6.5, which is 42.25, and we are going to minus the square of 2.5, which is 6.25. When we subtract that, we get 36. No one needs to determine the square root of 36. We know that from a long time ago. So that's 6 centimeters for side A. When using the formula to determine the length of long or short side, take careful note of the answer. When a short side is required and the answer is longer than the hypotenuse, this should be alarming because there's no side that can be longer than the hypotenuse. If the hypotenuse is required and the answer is shorter than any other side, the process needs to be re-examined. So, if you are going to be finding the hypotenuse, and when you take a look at, at the answer, it is smaller than the side that you have for the hypotenuse, or smaller than any other side for that matter, it is going to be a disaster. We need to have the hypotenuse being the longest side. So if we have something different, it means that the process needs to be re-examined. And let us continue. Finding the short side, we have the hypotenuse squared is the longer side, which is 8.5. So 8.5 squared minus 7.5 squared. Let's see what we get. 72.25 minus 
and that is equal to 16, of course we know the square root of 16 is 4, so that one is 4 centimeters. So let us take a look at our final triangle in this section. Right now, we are going to determine the length of side C, which is, of course, one of the shorter side of the right angle triangle. Good. Now, we are going to have the hypotenuse right there. The hypotenuse goes first, the square of it, minus the square of the other short side. And uh, that is our result. And of course, the square root of 4, no problem. And that's all there is to it. Now, we are going to be solving a right angle triangle. That is, find the missing sides and the angles in the following right angle triangle. So, it might be a single missing side or a single missing angle. But, we are going to find all of the sides and angles that are missing in the triangle. And that, that is what it means to solve a right angle triangle. When attempting to solve a triangle, our first task is to identify the easiest unknown to be determined and find it. So that is the easiest one. Which one is the easiest to be found? Whenever we have two angles of a triangle, it is easy to find the other. So it is very, very easy to find the other. So let us go straight ahead and find the missing angle because we have the other two. So let's progress. Do not forget that the value of a right angle in a triangle is always known. So the, the right angle in any right angle triangle is always known. Of course, it is equal to 90 degrees. And we are going to say that when we add all the angles, the answer is 180 degrees. So R plus 90 plus 30 is equal to 180. So R is equal to, we are going to transpose the plus 90 and the plus 30 to the other side. And those will acquire negative signs. So on transposing to the other side, we have a negative 90 and a negative 30. So R, our angle R is equal to 180 minus 90 minus 30, and let's see what that is, 60 degrees. It takes its place in its appropriate position right there. The angle R will prove to be the easiest of the unknowns to find as we attempt to find the others. So that's the easiest one to find, and we will move on to finding the others. Let us then find Q. In order to do this, we need to make direct reference to the sides and angles that are given. So we need to find Q. The side that is given is this one, and the angle that is given is this. So we are going to use those angles to assist us, the sides and the angles to assist us to find Q. So the 30 degrees angle is given, and Q is opposite to it. So Q is opposite to that 30 degrees angle. The other known is 10. So that side is 10 centimeters of this other information that we had to begin with. It is opposite to the right angle and is therefore the hypotenuse. Right, so that is hypotenuse. We have opposite and hypotenuse. Find the trig ratio that makes use of them. What trig ratio makes use of opposite and hypotenuse. That trig ratio is the sine trig ratio. So, of course, the angle that we are speaking specifically of is 30 degrees. So sine 30, of course, is opposite over hypotenuse. We have the opposite, which is Q, and the hypotenuse, which is 10. So we're going to substitute those values into the equation. Right. So we need to find Q. Q, and we have on that same side, Q is divided by 10. So in order to find Q, we need to transpose this 10 to the other side. So by transposition, we have 10 sine 30 is equal to Q. And of course, if we reverse that, Q is equal to 10 sine 30, and sine 30 is equal to 0 0.5. So Q is equal to 10 sine 30, sine 30 is equal to 0 0.5, and 10 times 0 0.5 is equal to 5 centimeters. The value of sine 30 is known to be 0 0.5. That you can de determine by looking at multiplication tables, or you may use the more up-to-date standard, use a scientific calculator. So we are going to move on. And this time, we are going to find P. 
And of course, as usual, make reference to the known sides and angles and their relationships to P. P is the adjacent. So this, the angle that we have is 30 degrees and P is adjacent to it. The other known side is 10 centimeters and as usual, have, we have seen from the previous solution, it is a hypotenuse. What ratio contains hypotenuse and adjacent? So that is cosine. So cosine of 30 is adjacent over hypotenuse. And what is the adjacent? The adjacent is P and the hypotenuse is 10. So we're going to do our substitution. And after we have done that, P, in order to find P, we transpose 10 to the other side and we are going to have 30 multiplied by 10. So we are going to have cosine 30 multiplied by 10 or more appropriately written 10 cos 30. So 10 cos 30 is equal to P. P is equal to 10 cos 30. Right. So what is 10 cos 30? Cos 30 is 0 0.866 and that we multiply it by 10, we get 8.66 centimeters. And of course it takes this position right there. The values of sines and cosines may be found by using scientific calculators or mathematical tables. So we have solved the first triangle. We have found all of the sides and angles that are missing. We first need to establish the relationship between an unknown side or an angle and the known sides and angles. So if we are going to be working in order to find a side or an angle, we need to see how the known sides and angles relate to the one that we intend to find. We need to determine the trig ratio that pertains to the unknown side or angle and the unknown sides and angles. So we need to take a look at the trig ratio that is involved. And after doing that, the relationship that is declared should be an equation in one unknown. And that involves trig ratio. So that single equation that we have in one unknown should involve a trig ratio or Pythagoras theorem. The equation many times requires transposition. Students should be mindful of the fact that the sine, cosine, and tangents of angles are all known quantities and may be accessed by using scientific calculators or mathematical tables. Let us solve this other right angle triangle. Of course, the side that is given is 18 centimeters and uh, the angle that is also given right here is 40 degrees. The easiest of the unknowns to find is the angle A. The two acute angles will add to give 90 degrees. Instead of saying that all of the angles of a triangle add to give 180 degrees, we may say that one of the angle, the right angle, is equal to 90 degrees. So the sum of the other two will therefore be equal to 90 degrees. Of course, in a right angle triangle, the right angle is 90. All of the angles should add to give 180. The sum of the other two angles will be 90 degrees, and that fact is used right there. So A is equal to 90 degrees minus 40 degrees, and that is equal to 50 degrees. You may have realized that I have never used one of the values that I have found in the calculation of another. This is because it is not a good practice to use a previously calculated value in your calculation unless it is unavoidable. A previously calculated value has a potential for the following maladies. A, if it is a rounded figure, so if it is a figure that is rounded, it will take off somewhat from the value that it is used to calculate. So if you use the, a previously calculated value to calculate another value, if the figure was rounded off, then it will take somewhat away from the one that you are using it to calculate. And the second one is, if it is woefully wrong, the answer will contain cascaded errors. That means if it is wrong, anything that you are going to use it to calculate, great chance, 99.99% of a chance that that is going to be wrong also. 
We are continuing. Let us find B. It is the hypotenuse. How do we know? It is the longest side and it is opposite to the right angle. The known values are the 40 degrees and that is an angle and the 18 centimeter side. Now they are opposite to each other. They are high. So the known side is opposite to the known angle. So we are going to introduce the trig ratio that contains opposites and hypotenuse. Remember that the reference angle is the 40 degrees angle. So sine 40 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Why? Because we are trying to find B first. The side and angle that we know already are opposite to each other. And of course, we need to find B. B is the hypotenuse, so we need to use a trig ratio that contains opposite and hypotenuse. That trig ratio is sine. So sine of 40 is equal to the opposite, which is 18, over the hypotenuse, which is B. And of course, that can be transposed to say we are dividing here by B, so we are multiplying by B on the other side. So we have B sine 40 is equal to 18, and that is what we have right here. Then we also need to find B, and it is being multiplied by sine 40 on this side, so we need to divide by sine 40 on the other side. And what is sine 40? 0 0.64, so B is equal to 18 over 0 0.64, and that is equal to 28 centimeters, and also we try to put one there just to, keep, to remind us that we have done that already. In order to find C, Pythagoras theorem may also be used. However, B is a calculated value, so we opt for another method. Although the theorem will not necessarily give an incorrect answer or even a far off answer. So even though the answer might not be wrong or even far off from what it should be, we are not going to be using Pythagoras theorem. Because if we were going to use it, we are going to use it with a previously calculated value. And we do not want to use a previously calculated value unless we have to. Let us find C. It is adjacent to the known angle. So C that we have there, the angle that is known right here, C is adjacent to it. And of course, the known values are the 40 degrees angle and the 18 centimeters side. The 18 centimeters side is what? Opposite. So the 18 centimeters side is opposite to this angle, and C is adjacent. Therefore, we are looking at opposite and adjacent. So that's the 18 centimeters, and it is opposite to the angle that we are talking about. So we're going to introduce the trig ratio that contains opposite and adjacent. And do not forget that the angle that we are talking about, our reference angle, is 40 degrees. So tan 40 is equal to opposite over adjacent, and we are going to substitute the values. Right, so we get tan 40 is equal to opposite, which is 18, over adjacent, which is C. So we have here, transposing this, C that is divided on this side is multiplied on the other side. So C tan 40 is equal to 18, and of course, we need to find C, so we're going to divide by tan 40. So C is equal to 18 over tan 40, and we have that here, 18 over 0 0.84, and that is equal to 21.4 centimeters. I hope that you have, I hope that you had as much fun as I did in solving the first two triangles. Let us move merely to the third and final problem in this section. So we're going to look at that one. Not like the others. The easiest of the unknowns to find in this case is the side Y. See that of the two angles X and Y, we do not have any value, so we know that X and Y are unknown. Therefore, we cannot immediately find the size of any angle. Well, we have these two sides, and any time we have the we have two sides of a right angle triangle, it is always easy to find another one by using Pythagoras theorem. 
So the other sides of the, the other side of the right angle triangle are known. So Pythagoras theorem may be used. Why is one of the shorter sides? Therefore, the fitting formula should be used, which is the one that is with the subtraction. Remember, the ones with the subtraction is the one that we use to determine the shorter side. We have done that before. So we're going to substitute the values. So substitute the values. What do we have? Y is equal to 13 squared minus 12 squared. 13 squared is 169. 12 squared is 144. Subtraction gives 25, and the square root of 25 is equal to 5 centimeters. That is the length of the side y. Let us find x. The hypotenuse is known. So that is our hypotenuse, and we are going to be finding x. Which other side is known? The angle x is, the, is in question. And the other known side, 12 centimeters, is opposite to it. So, right. So, we have x to find, and the hypotenuse is known, and the other side that is known is opposite to it. So, we have to use that trig ratio. So, use the trig ratio that makes use of opposite and hypotenuse. And, of course, that is the sine trig ratio. So, sine x is opposite over hypotenuse. What's the opposite? 12 and the hypotenuse is 13, so 12 over 13. So sine x is equal to 0 0.92. Of course, that is the decimal fraction that represents 12 over 13. So x is equal to sine inverse 0 0.92. When we have the sine of an angle and we do not have the angle, we use what is called the inverse. So we have x is equal to sine inverse of 0 0.92. That, is, that can be determined by a scientific calculator also. So x is equal to 67 degrees, and it goes right there. The new symbol is the inverse of sine, known as sine inverse. It is used when determining an angle whose sine is known. The other trig ratios have their inverses and may be used analogously. The other angle is 23 degrees. However, in keeping with our policy on previously calculated values and for practice, we are going to use the trig ratio to calculate it. So find the W. The hypotenuse is known. The hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. It does not change. So relative to W, the 12 centimeters that we have there is the adjacent. So our pertinent trig ratio should include adjacent and hypotenuse. What trig ratio is that? Cosine. So cosine W is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So cos W is equal to 12 over 13. So cos W is equal to 0 0.92. W is equal to cos inverse of 0 0.92, and that is equal to 23 degrees. Now, now that we have established the trig ratio, we are going to use the trig ratio to determine the size of the angle, because we do not have the angle as yet. That is done by taking the inverse of the trig ratio. Do not forget that the trig ratios and Pythagoras theorem are applicable in solutions that are defined by a right angle triangle. If the triangle is not right angled, the trig ratios in their pure form cannot be used. The subsequent topic will address the other situations. So do not say opposite over hypotenuse if the triangle is not right angled.